SpaceX, Musk's private spaceflight company, has long been developing several launch vehicles that could not only take humans to space, but also bring them back. The company was known for its reusable Falcon 9 rocket, but another of SpaceX's projects that appears to be gaining popularity is the Starship, a space vehicle crafted out of shiny stainless steel that Musk hopes will one day play a part in interplanetary travel. SpaceX was founded to reduce the cost of space travel, thereby making humans a multi-planetary species. This is partly motivated by existing threats, such as asteroid collisions big enough to wipe out the human species off the surface of the Earth. Due to this reason, Elon Musk developed Starship, a fully reusable, super heavy lift launch vehicle that is capable of carrying up to 100 tons of passengers and cargo to space. So, what's more about Starship, and how is it built? This video will reveal everything you need to know about the Elon Musk Starship. Let's get down to it. Starship was initially mentioned in public discussions by Musk in 2012, as part of a description of the company's overall Mars system architecture, then known as the Mars Colonial Transporter. It was proposed as a privately funded development project to design and build a spaceflight system of reusable rocket engines, launch vehicles, and space capsules, to eventually transport humans to Mars and return them back to Earth. Musk has often spoken about his dream of building cities on Mars. He believes that settlements would need large numbers of people to become self-sustaining. To realize this dream requires a space vehicle that's up to the task. That's where the Starship comes in. The Starship system is designed to be fully reusable, which means that the principal hardware elements are not discarded in the sea or allowed to burn up like other launch systems. Instead, they are recovered from space so that they can be refurbished and flown again, thereby reducing the cost of the whole enterprise. In mid-September of 2016, Musk noted that the name, Mars Colonial Transporter, would not continue, as the system would be able to go well beyond Mars, and that a new name would be needed. Now this is harder, the reusability doesn't apply quite as much to Mars, because the number of times they can reuse the, the spaceship is... It, it, that the spaceship part of the system is left less often because the Earth-Mars rendezvous only occurs every, every 26 months. The name selected was the Interplanetary Transport System, or ITS for short. It was said that the ITS will stand at 400 feet tall when stacked and will be powered by the SpaceX's next-generation Raptor engine, which is more powerful than the Merlin that propels the company's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. The ITS ship was planned to have nine Raptors on the spaceship, and the 40-foot-wide booster will have 42 Raptors, allowing the rocket to produce 13,033 tons of thrust at liftoff. That's 3.6 times more than what NASA's Saturn moon rocket was able to generate. Later in 2017, Musk tweaked the design and the name to Big Falcon Rocket, or the BFR. The BFR was shorter, slimmer, and less powerful than its design predecessor. Measuring at 348 feet tall by 30 feet wide when stacked, and only featuring 31 Raptor engines on the booster and 6 Raptor engines on the spaceship. Some months later, BFR was no more, and Musk revealed that the system will be now called Starship. Starship will also be the spacecraft's name, and the giant rocket or booster will be called the Super Heavy. At launch, Starship will sit atop the rocket Super Heavy, having a combined height of 390 feet. The vehicles will be powered by the SpaceX's next-generation Raptor engine. Starship will have six Raptors, while Super Heavy will sport around 30 Raptors. The spacecraft, also called the Starship, with its nose cone and landing fins, is a stainless steel vehicle that represents the rocket ships from the golden age of sci-fi. The rear of the 160-feet spacecraft has six highly efficient Raptor engines. The combustion takes place in stages, and the engine is designed in a way that it reduces the amount of propellant that's wasted. The propellants which feed liquid methane and liquid oxygen to the Raptors are located towards the middle of the vehicle. Methane serves as the fuel, and oxygen acts as an oxidizer, a chemical that makes the fuel burn. The combination of both is called methalox. This choice of fuel is unusual for rocket engines, but methane can generate plenty of thrust, and it is also a prudent choice in light of Musk's designs on Mars. The SpaceX founder says that the methane could be synthesized from the Martian subsurface water and atmospheric carbon dioxide using a chemical process known as the Sabitier reaction. 
so refueling Starship for the return trip to Earth using Martian resources would confer a level of self-sufficiency, making journeys both more feasible and cost-effective. Towards the front of the spacecraft, which is sometimes referred to as the upper stage, is a huge payload compartment that will be able to haul large cargo or people to destinations in deep space. The rocket booster, also known as the Super Heavy, is 230 feet long and will be filled with 3,400 tons of chilled methyl ox, a mixture of liquid methane and oxygen. It will be powered by 30 Raptor engines, providing 72 mega newtons of maximum thrust. This makes it to be able to lift at least 100 tons of payload, which will make the Super Heavy more powerful than the immense Saturn V launcher used for the Apollo moon missions in the 1960s and 1970s. Another thing to note about Starship is that it isn't just powerful, it'll be downright roomy. Starship has a standard payload fairing of 9 meters in outer diameter and 8 meters in inner diameter, resulting in the largest usable payload compared to any other launcher. So it can carry entire space systems into orbit, without the need to take the objects apart and send them up in pieces for reassembly in orbit. And the material used in building the Starship also makes Starship stand out among other spacecraft. SpaceX previously planned to build the Starship system out of carbon fiber, but in January of 2019, Musk announced that he was switching to stainless steel alloy known as 301. SpaceX chose stainless steel over carbon fiber, because stainless steel has great temperature tolerance and is far cheaper than carbon fiber. Although it's a bit heavier than carbon fiber, it is also crucial for the reusable aspect of the Starship and the Super Heavy as rapid and frequent reusability is key to the SpaceX's long-term vision of making space travel economically feasible. Also, the temperature tolerance property is a big deal, because the whole idea behind Starship is to be an interplanetary transport system. This means that the spaceship will be subjected to both freezing and scorching temperatures, as it ascends from and ascends into planetary atmospheres. This is where the stainless steel finds its use. It has a particularly good tolerance to temperature variances that many other metals can't compete with, as stainless steel handles heating far better than carbon composites do. When Starship enters Mars' incredibly thin atmosphere, the amount of drag will be increased to slow the vehicle down as it falls. Dragging produces enormous heat that even stainless steel can barely withstand. So SpaceX aims to cool the Starship's descent with the liquid methylox underneath the Starship's surface, which will essentially fight back against the heat. In the past few years, SpaceX has been cranking out prototypes of the Starship at its Boca factory in Texas, performing incremental tests and flights on the vehicles in preparation for sending one into orbit. SpaceX has flown a few Starship prototypes which are smaller in size compared to the final Starship design. The company started with a test article of 39 meters tall, called the Starhopper, which bore a passing resemblance to a water tower. Since flying this vehicle 150 meters above the ground, SpaceX has been developing increasingly complex Starship prototypes. The first prototype, which was launched in December of 2020, is the SN8, which features a nose cone and flaps. It flew to an altitude of 12.5 kilometers, but it belly flopped back to Earth, giving SpaceX valuable engineering data about the final part of the vehicle's return from space. However, SN8 approached the launching pad a little too fast and hard, causing it to crumple and explode. In January of 2021, the SN9 was launched, and it ended up much the same way as the SN8. In March of 2021, the SN10 managed to land, but a fire developed around its base, causing the prototype to blow itself apart on the landing pad. In the same month, the SN11 was also launched, and it soared to an altitude of 10 kilometers, but also exploded during the test. SN15 was tested early this month, and it flew as high as 10 kilometers. SN-15 marked the first Starship prototype that was not destroyed after a high-altitude flight test. Although a small fire broke out at the base of the rocket after the landing, the blaze that had appeared was contained a few minutes later. Nevertheless, Elon Musk has promised a lunar excursion in 2023 to the Japanese online rental billionaire Yusaku Mezawa, who will fly around the moon in a Starship with eight other people. Musk has also said that he will aim to launch one of the vehicles on an uncrewed flight to Mars in 2024. Starship might also play a role in NASA's Artemis program, which aims to establish a long-term human presence on the moon. In 2020, SpaceX was awarded $135 million by NASA to advance the design of the Starship so it could be used as a crewed lunar lander. That's it guys, 
What do you think about the SpaceX Starship? What do you think about the future of technology in the years to come? Let's hear your views or opinions via the comment section below. We'll be glad to hear from you. And please, do not subscribe unless you are into technology, because that is what this channel is all about. Now, let's watch another fantastic video from our channel. I'll meet you there.